The world needs conscious companies. In fact, I believe that conscious companies are going to transform how we work and how we build community. So in my latest newsletter, I talk about why we need conscious companies, how to define them, and what it's going to mean for our future. And as y'all know, this is the year for us to really step back and examine the way that we have done things. Although the pandemic has caused a lot of us to have uh, inconvenienced a lot of people, caused a lot of problems for people with being out of work or health issues, things like that, sometimes opportunity can come disguised or clothed as a, a grave challenge. And I think that's what we're facing right now in our world is although the pandemic has caused a lot of problems, it's also causing us to wake up and examine stuff that we haven't before. I mean, how often do we get the opportunity to step back when we're not all running everywhere, <laughs> so busy with our schedules and our crazy busy lives? How often do we get that opportunity to step back? It's as if we're riding a merry-go-round and we get to step back off the ride and go, wait, this ride isn't going anywhere. And I don't really like the music and I don't really like the horse I was riding on. <laughs> Like it's a chance for us to actually step back and look at the merry round, look at the whole picture and, and think about, could we redesign this? Can we totally redesign? And I don't want to get back on that merry go round. I want to get in a car and actually go somewhere and move somewhere in the future that's very productive. We can do that. We have that chance right now to examine. And I think 2020, um, you know, as corny as it sounds, 2020 is clear vision. I really do think this is the year about that, where we can re-examine things, figure out where we're going, what we want out of life. And I think one of those things is we want more conscious companies. We want more conscious businesses. We want a more conscious workplace. So, you know, in a recent letter, I did describe how I define conscious leadership. So you can go back through my, my newsletters and, and find that article where I talked about uh, conscious leadership. But conscious leadership is all about awareness of who you are, how you show up in the world, and really letting go of those, those old hierarchical systems uh, that were all about fear, intimidation, selfishness, greed, and looking more holistically at business and how it fits into a community and how it can give back to all the stakeholders in a community. So that's a conscious leader. Conscious leader then builds out a company that does the same thing. And I really do believe that uh, there's no going back to the old ways of doing things after we've all, well, many of us have tried working at home or uh, we've had kids at home and we're trying out new things with education. There's just, our eyes have been open to different possibilities that before, because of our par paradigm, we just didn't see a different way of doing things. And I think we're shifting into a new way of being. And this is our chance. This is our opportunity to change for the better how we define businesses, corporations, teams, companies, and the very nature of how we work. This is our opportunity. And, you know, a few years ago, um, John Mackey, who is the founder of Whole Foods, which I'm here in Austin. So uh, this is Whole Foods hometown. It's where it was founded. Their corporate headquarters are, are downtown here in Austin on Lamar and 6th Street. Uh, John Mackey, I've been following his work for a long time, and he wrote a book a few years ago on conscious capitalism. And his concern was that capitalism as an economic system has really gotten a bad rap because it does tend to draw people who uh, can exploit it for greed or selfish gains. And that really broke his heart because he himself is a conscious leader. So uh, he talked about this book, uh, how you don't, it doesn't all have to be about maximizing profit for the company or the, the, those at the top of the company or the shareholders. He talks about, we can go beyond that. We can look at having purpose, and profit. It's not like you can't have one or the other or to have profit, you can't have purpose or to have purpose, you can't really have profit. They can coexist and you can do it really well. And in the book, he describes what that looks like. So I share that vision. I share his passion for bringing more conscious leadership into the world that prioritizes the team and the stakeholders in a larger community. So the environmental impact, um, are you building up employees? Are you making sure that they're paid well? Uh, that they have the things that they need to live a fulfilling life and also the products and services you're providing. Are they taking care of those stakeholders and examining it from a holistic, holographic type perspective? So, you know, one of the things that I love to talk about with conscious leadership and conscious companies is that companies can be more than profit centers. It's, it's my heart to see them 
transform into entities for the betterment of humankind. So it's not just for the humans <laughs> and the world and stakeholders that are outside the office. It can also be for inside the people that are inside the business. And, you know, sometimes we look at the places that we work as just a paycheck or this is where I'm going to go build my career. That's how we look at it right now. But what I would love to see is businesses that look more holistically at people. And as y'all know, I'm a professional coach. And so I'm all about people being fully who they are and bringing their full selves to life and going after their dreams and achieving them and not having regrets or feeling like, man, I just, there's some stuff I, I could have worked on and I, I could have gotten there. And so many people I coach feel that way. They know they're, they've kind of plateaued and they're ready to get to that next level or um, maybe they're just having some issues with motivation. I work with a lot of people that are going through that, especially right now with the pandemic. There's a lot of people that are just confused about purpose and passion and um, procrastination. Just a lot of different topics when I'm coaching various people. This is what they bring to me. This is what they want to talk about. What if we brought that into the workplace where you can be your whole self and you get the coaching that you need to bring your whole self into the workplace? And it's almost like college or school. Like you just keep learning and growing and the company's investing in that and it's helping its employees become fully who they can be. I just, that's, I would love to see that moving forward where people are happy about where they go to work and, and know it's going to be fulfilling and they're going to keep growing as they stay at that organization or perhaps if they move around to different organizations, but they know they're going to keep growing. So right now uh, I'm reading a book called the everyone culture and it's by Robert Keegan and Lisa Laskow Leahy. And they are both at Harvard. And the book is published by Harvard Business Review, which is a fantastic place to get really great information about leadership and building teams and it's a fantastic resource. Highly recommend it. Uh, but you know, their whole thing is they believe that companies need to be deliberately developmental. And that means not just focusing on hard skill sets, but, or, or you know, that, that really get maximized profits in the short term. But what about bringing coaching and development into the very nature of how the organization functions? And when I found this book, I just was like, oh my God, this is what I've been trying to describe. And someone's actually done research on it. <laughs> and the book's only been out, I think about four years now. Uh, but I am just loving this book. And I think I've mentioned this before. I'm going to be doing a lot more videos and content uh, on the research uh, that Keegan and Leahy had done on this because it's just, it's fantastic. So I want to bring more of that to the workplace and help y'all develop, develop deliberately developmental organizations that really develop your whole team and, and make them a whole, your teams, like looking at them holistically. So, uh, you know, I think that we do need to focus more on conscious companies and building organizations that give back to the broader worlds and they can really help it usher in an era of conscious leadership. I mean, can you imagine like uh, a John Mackey or all these different amazing leaders that we see that, that look at the people in the organization? What if we had that everywhere? I mean, it'd be just an incredible thing for us to have. So I encourage you to um, check out that book. Go check out my newsletter. It's meredithturney.substack.com. And if you're hungry to build a legacy of impact while building a future where the world can truly th thrive, let's connect. You can go to my website, meredithattorney.com, or you can email me, meredith at meredithattorney.com. And let's talk about how you can build out this kind of an organization, or if you're an employee at one at a company or organization, let's talk about you and how you can raise your consciousness and bring this kind of leadership into the workplace. Because it's not just for those at the top, this is for everyone. We can all become conscious leaders because leadership is all about who you impact. Even if that's just your dog or your parents or whoever, we can all be conscious leaders. And it's my firm belief that we can be the change we want to see in the world. And that means we have to work on our inner self and who we are. And that does have impact that goes out. When you change yourself, it goes out to the rest of the world. So I hope that you will work happy, live happy, be happy. And I look forward to talking to you more about this topic in the future. Bye.